Okay, <clears throat> I'm down here again with the Howard 23 in the RX chassis. I am going to swap the um, trigger springs over for a couple of lighter springs. Um, to do that, it's got to come out of the chassis and I'm, I'm going to remove the trigger from the action just to make it a bit easier. There's no bolt in this rifle. Dump the magazine out. Sit that in there so I don't forget it. Check there's nothing in the chamber, which is not. And I can start working on it. Okay. Loosen these two action screws off. out quite freely. Okay, there's that screw. I'll retighten these to 55 inch pounds with the torque wrench when I'm done. Okay, there's the second screw. Long screw to the back in the Chevy, short screw to the front. Set the screws there so we don't lose them. Okay, now we'll leave this as a metric. Should have had this set up beforehand, but I didn't. That's it right there. I'll loosen this off. Now the trick with um, pushing these push pins out is don't lose the little e clips. That's still in there a bit. I'm going to sit the action over there because I don't need it for the time being. Okay, we're back here. Um, I might just pinch this rag here to do this with. What I'll end up doing is I'll end up holding this in here like this and I'll um, just push the pins off like that. Grab a little scooter on a set here. I can't remember how I did this last time actually. I think I just got. Actually, I didn't use that, did I? Maybe that one. Maybe that one. I'll try this one first. Okay. Rotate that around. This one should come off easy enough. Just that, and I'll sit that in there. Stop myself from losing it. Now, this is where it gets a bit trickier. So I don't have another actual screwdriver set here. Yeah, you're probably not going to be able to see this. Because of how I'm positioning this. That shoots off, I want it to shoot back in there and get caught. Don't want it to come out at me. Which is easier said than done. Because I don't have a little pliers to pull these things off with. There it is right there. Magnetized, it won't come off. There we go. Okay, quite a bit easier to put back on. So, this is the trigger. Um, these two pins now get pushed out the other side. They can completely come out. There is a slightly longer one, which is this forward one here, this one here, that one there. 
and it's because it's got to go through this safety body as well the other one's a little bit shorter okay so we'll get this done um, these can be under a bit of tension too so first off we'll do this back one now that one comes out I'm gonna hold the trigger because it has a spring in there sit in there too so there's two springs in this, one which controls the um, the first stage take up, and then the second spring which controls the the let off at the rear. Now to get this out, you have to slightly compress it. You don't want to lose that that spring there. So I'm going to set him. Actually, I'm going to set it over here. I'll set him in there. That's the first stage. That's the trigger. Very, very easily. There we go. I'm guessing it was just a bit of that thread locker caught, caught in there, inside the body. I put that in there before I got the, um, before I got the, the replacement the replacement eclipse yeah. Is that a longer one in there let's take a look at that yeah there's definitely some junk on there which I'm guessing is Red locking compound. We'll sit that in there. That's definitely what was holding that pin up. Now see sear drops free. And that's the other spring. You guys probably can't see it. There's the sear and then another spring which is the trigger weight spring. Okay. So we've got the trigger, the sear. The sear spring, which is what controls the second second stage pull, and it is the bigger of the two because it has to deal with more weight than the first stage take up. Otherwise, if it was in the reverse, it'd technically just be a single stage trigger. There'd be no point in having a two stage trigger. Okay, now give this stuff a bit of a wipe off. Make sure it doesn't have any junk on it. And then, this is the other kit here. It's just a matter of separating the two springs. There we go. Now, previously, with the other trigger spring that I had in, it was a one and a half pound kit. I think it averaged out to 1.6 pounds. It was like 732 grams, something like that. Interesting to see what this one comes out at. Okay, let me see here. This is a easy way to put this in this one no I'm gonna grab a smaller little allen slash hex key you'll see why momentarily because if you can slide that on there like that it makes lining it, lining it up with the hole it's got to go in a whole lot easier just like that you guys probably can't see it what I'm doing is basically sliding the spring on, putting this down into the hole that it's got to rest in, and then it slides down straight into the hole. See, the little hook faces backwards towards the back of the rifle. That then drops in up there like that. Now this is the trick. You've got to use your Allen key to position that in just the right spot. I've got that there. Now I've got to grab my longer, the sear pin. I'm going to slide that pin in. So I can see it almost there like that. I'm going to slide the sear down to the point where I line those holes up. Just like that. And then boom. 
that's the sear in place with the new spring. All I've got to do is put the E-clip back on it. Okay, and like I said, I'll use the E-clip that come with this trigger spring kit because it's a better fit, it's a tighter fit. Not that my one, the aftermarket one I got, wouldn't hold it. Just this one will probably hold it better. Okay, with the trigger. See, there's that hole in the forward. So the trigger faces, well, trigger faces this way on the gun. So you're pulling back on it this way. This is the hole that the pin slides through, the push pin. This is the hole that the first stage spring sits in inside the trigger to provide that resistance. Okay, so. I'll put both E-clips on together when I'm done. This is the slightly trickier one because you have to fit it in with the spring in the trigger like so. And it's very hard to get it to fit nicely because it has to push against the C face there. This one's the one that's a bit harder work. I'll just slide that up. Just using your this will actually stay there now. So I need my shorter push pin. I'm gonna line that shorter push pin up so it's sitting in the body of the trigger but not stopping the trigger from pushing through and I'm going to hold it there now from this side I'm going to look through the body of the trigger group and through the hole in the trigger and push it through just like that now again this is where we get sort of complicated because what we're going to do is we're going to have to put these e-clips back on and because they're under quite a bit of tension, sometimes they're hard to put on. So hold both of them together, slide one up where against where it's got to go, and because this is a magnetised tool head, I'm actually going to swap it out. Swap it out purely for this driver bit make things a bit easier yeah. like anything if you're trying to film it it's ten times harder than it should be that's one e-clip on now I just got to grab the second one nope Yoink. pick him up like that it's also harder because I'm wearing gloves. Okay, so. Getting a phone call. I'll pause the video and pick it back up. I fit that second pin while I was on that phone call, which I forgot to turn the camera off, I pushed the wrong button. Um, but yeah, it's very simple to fit. All you're doing is just pushing it back on. That trigger is quite a bit lighter now. This is a one pound kit. This has to go back into the Into the trigger. Let's do this first bit by hand. I'll tighten this up because I can't feel the tension on that spring because it's a relatively light spring. I'll tighten that up. I'll put it on the gun because it's easy enough to adjust this while it's on the gun. And then we'll get a a weight on this and we'll see how much it weighs okay I'll attach this back onto the gun without the camera 
and it'll be easier that way, quicker for me to do it, then I'll pick it back up testing the weight of the trigger. Okay? Okay, we're back. We've got the trigger attached to the gun. There's literally a 10 second exercise. Just putting one screw in. But, what we'll try and do now before attaching it back to the action is I'll have to go get the bolt and I'll have to put this trigger scale together. Okay, let's test this trigger. Okay, it's supposed to be about a pound. Let's see if we can... That's the first stage take up. He's still come up against a decent wall. Okay. That feels all right. Let's get an actual weight on it. First stage. Okay, 1.4 pounds, because I have that screw wound in quite a ways, that's 572 grams. Okay, I'm going to set that down for a moment, and I'm going to mess with this screw, which means I'll have to loosen this off. Well, that's not too bad. It could just be me using this. So you have to be very careful not to apply any more pressure after the trigger fires. That should be good. I'll leave it there. I'm just going to check that that is in fact tight enough. Which I believe that it is. So that shall do it for the time being. Okay. I'll get this back in the stock, or in the chassis, technically. Okay, we're back at tightening the chassis up. I have bumped the chassis on the ground to make sure the recoil lug is seated properly within the chassis. And tighten up, 55 on the front. And... 55 on the rear and that's done